<laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason, and we're in the kitchen today. Uh, Angela's got a beautiful recipe designed for a lovely, warm, soft pretzel, right? Okay, you ever walk through the mall, which I haven't been in a mall in I don't know, 15 years, but if <laughs> you ever walked in a mall and you know you go, go by the food court and go to those pretzel places, right? Or or a food truck that's got you got some nice pretzels at a, at a fair, or carnival, whatever. This is gonna be that. All right, so I'm gonna take you over there and let Angela K show you how it's done. Okay, to start, you want to make your dough. So you have three cups of bread flour here. You can use all-purpose flour. But you're gonna get more of a chew on your pretzels if you you're gonna get a much better texture if you use bread flour we have three cups and then we have a half a cup of just in case flour why would you do that just why would you have just in case flour just in case it doesn't clean the bowl okay gotcha because remember you have to listen to your dough okay it's gonna to talk to you it's gonna tell you if it need if it's still hungry and needs more flour okay we have two tablespoons of lightly packed brown sugar. I'm choosing to use light brown sugar because it adds a much better flavor to the pretzels than just white sugar. And then over here on this side of the bowl, and it's important that it's on this side of the bowl, we have one teaspoon of salt. And then on this side of the bowl, opposite sides, we have two and three-fourths teaspoons of instant yeast. You want them on opposite sides of the bowl because salt kills yeast. So you don't want them touching. You separate them bad boys. They're going to war. So you have to mix your salt in, get it coated in flour, mix your yeast in, get it coated in flour. And once they're coated in flour, they're, it's okay to mix them. Flour the anti, is the anti-war? It coats them, basically. <laughs> Now you want to mix all that together because now you can because your yeast is coated and your your salt is coated. So now you have you have one cup of warm water. This is between 110 and 115. When you stick your finger in it, if you would put your baby in it, it's soft. It's good to put your. So 110 rest. degrees, 115 degrees. Warm yes, is the temperature of the water. Fahrenheit. Okay. Or the Celsius equivalent. And you want to add the cup of water. Here we have two tablespoons of salted butter that we have melted. You want to add that. Now you want to mix all of this together. And as I've told you, it's going to talk to you. You just got to listen to what it's saying to you. And see, see if it needs any more flour. It might and it might not. It depends on your environment. If your environment's very dry, then it's probably not going to. If it's if you're you see a lot of humidity, you'll probably need some more flour. So now I'm going in with my favorite tools, the ones God put at the end of my wrist. And just like I've taught you with any other bread dough of any sort. You want it to clean the bowl. If it doesn't clean the bowl, then it's not ready. So you want to knead it and you want to work it until it, till you feel that it's cleaning the bowl. Until it's picked up all of this flour in the bottom and that it's cleaning the bowl. Now, do you have a specific technique that you like to use when you're doing this? Because I'm watching you. It looks like you have a way that you're going about it. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a kneading action. Because I'm kind of just kind of folding it over and pushing. Cause I, so I'm kind of kneading it. Mm -hmm. And kind of squeezing it to feel mm -hmm. if there's stickiness there. Mm -hmm. And there's some stickiness, but it's not really enough. But are you, are you turning the ball as you go a little bit here? A little bit. Okay. Why is that? Just so it for a more even okay. 
just so that it cleans all of the areas of the bowl right. and I make sure that it's cleaning everything. Gotcha. And I think this bad boy probably doesn't need it's any pretty more. solid, honestly. It's doing so good. So we're going to put it out on our surface. You don't want to flower your surface at this point. We'll see if it needs anything, oil or otherwise. So now you want to knead it until a nice smooth dough ball forms. Which should only take probably about three to five minutes. It's not going to take long at all for that smooth dough ball to form. Because you're using, if you're using black bled flour. If, bloody flour. You're using some bloody flour. <laughs> if you're using bread flour, it has higher gluten. So it's not going to take long for it to form that, that ball that you're looking for. If you're using all-purpose flour, it may take a little longer to get that. And as you can see, it's starting to get, it's going to be tacky. This dough is going to be a little tacky, a little sticky. But you don't want it, when you push on it, you don't want it to leave dough behind. So I'm going to just hit it with a little bit of flour. Because this dough, you don't want to put too much oil into it. Because otherwise, you can't, it won't stick together when you roll it into pretzel shape. And you can feel it getting stiffer as you need it. It's going to get stiffer and smoother. And that's what you want it to do <laughs> because you're developing the gluten. It's been about three minutes or so and it's a nice smooth dough ball is formed. You'll know it's ready when you push on it and it bounces back. Then you know it's been nicely kneaded. Do that again so I can see it zoomed in. See yeah. it's bouncing back. Yep. Okay, now you want to just put a little drizzle. See, just a tiny little drizzle. That's olive oil used, right? Yes. Okay. You can use whatever oil okay, you want. Okay, gotcha. And then you want to roll your, your ball of dough in it. This keeps it from getting a, a crust on it because you really don't want, you really don't want it to develop a crust. Okay. Okay, then you'll put plastic wrap on it, put it in a draft-free warm place to rise. It will need to double in size this will take, depending on how warm and cozy the spot is, it can take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. I would say closer to 45. That's been 45 minutes. And look at that beautiful dough. That's awesome. That looks great. It smells wonderful. It does smell good. I love the smell of yeast. Now you want to push it down. Now we're going to cut it into our portions. You want to flatten it out into a disc. How, how how thick do you want that disc, by the way? It doesn't make okay. any difference. You got about, this about just, an inch or This less. is just to get okay. somewhat even cuts. Okay. So it doesn't really matter how, right. how thick. Which, if you if you're, if you you think you need a measurement, that's about three quarter inches. So you want to cut it in half. This, this will make ten. So you want to cut it in half and then cut each one in five. You'll want to score this first before you start cutting to make sure you have even sections or at least somewhat even. See, you can see where I scored it. That way you at least have somewhat even sections because you, you want them to be as even as you can possibly make them. For even baking time, right? Because yeah. If you have massive ones and the small ones are going to bake separate. They're going, They're going to bake separate. And it's going to be harder to get them baked appropriately. Yes. And some, some are going to be overbaked, some are going to be underbaked. So it's it's kind of... Which would be like America. Some people are overbaked, some people are underbaked. Some people are half-baked. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you have ten sections, at least somewhat equal. Now you want to pull your other sections off to the side. And you want, want to start working with one. You want to roll it out into a rope. And the best way to do that, separate your fingers and roll. That way you cover all of it at one time. You want to roll this into a 20 to 24 inch rope. So it's going to be a, a nice long rope. You want to start in the middle, work your way out. 
that'll give you an even rope. If you just roll like this, it's going to get really fat in the middle and really slim on the sides. You want to start in the middle and roll your way out. That's about it right there, Ben. Yep. Now, you want to fold it into a U. And if it starts to roll back up on you, then just pull it out again. Okay. Now you want to put it into a U. Cross it over. Twist it and down. And you've got your pretzel. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and then you, I have. That's pretty cool. I have two sheet pans over here, lined with parchment. It's very important that you line them with parchment. And at this time, while you are rolling these, you want to have your oven preheating to 450 degrees. And you also want to have eight cups of water coming to a boil with one fourth of a cup of baking soda. I know that sounds strange, but they are gonna turn out much better if you do a baking soda bath before you before you bake them. They are gonna turn out with that actual pretzel flavor and that actual pretzel look. So now we gotta keep rolling these out and keep rolling them into pretzels and then we will be back and I'll show you how to do the baking soda bath. Now our baking soda water is at a boil. Like I said, it's eight cups of water. You have to get this ratio right. It's eight cups of water and a fourth of a, of a cup of baking soda. You want to bring it to a boil and you want to knock at about medium high and then you want to knock it back to about medium so that it just keeps a constant, a, a nice boil but not get rolling boiled. Now, you can only do about two pretzels in here at a time. You don't want to overload. So, here's our first pan of pretzels. You want to make sure, you want to go through, pinch all these ends down. That way they don't unravel when you put them in the baking soda bath. So, you want to pinch all these ends down. Now, see they're nice and set now. So, you want to put them in. 30 seconds. Once they have went 30 seconds on this side, you flip them and do 30 seconds on the second side. Okay, now it's been 30 seconds on this side. Now you want to flip them over with a slotted spoon or like I'm using a stainless steel. I'm using a stainless steel spatula. Now you want to go 30 seconds on this side. You want to lift them out, shake all the water off to drain them as much as you can. Put them back on your parchment line sheet. And you want to keep going, work quickly, and get them all done. And then I'll show you what we do next. They're all out of their nice baking soda bath. And as you can see, they've already started rising. Yep. They've already started swelling up. So now you want to give them a good egg wash. That's what's going to give them their shiny top. You know, like those pretzels always have that nice shiny top. That's what's going to cause that. We have two large egg yolks in mm -hmm. here. And just a couple of slight splashes of water maybe totaling about a tablespoon so these egg yolks brought to you by madeline and lil <laughs> now you want to brush your pretzels really well with the egg wash you want to brush them nice and even because the more even you brush them the more consistent your your golden brown and your shine is going to be on them so you want to brush them all really nicely And I will show you brushing a couple of them, and then I'll show you what we do next, and then I'll finish them all up. Now, you, you want to make sure you get the edges and everything because you want them all to be pretty. And also, this is, this is going to help your salt stick as well. Okay. At this point, if you want cinnamon sugar pretzels instead of salty ones, instead of brushing them with egg, I would brush them with melted butter and then sprinkle cinnamon sugar on them. But I am doing pretzel salt. This is pretzel salt. Now, you can buy this either from Amazon or straight from Hoosier Hill. 
or there's several other brands on Amazon as well, but this is the one that, that I am using. And if you don't have pretzel salt, you can also just use cool sea salt. And you just want to take and sprinkle as much salt as you like. If you like a lot of pretzel salt, do a lot. If well, these are going to be thicker more. pretzels too. Right? Yes. So we got to remember that. So just sprinkle as much as you like and just keep doing the rest of your pretzels. Look at these beautiful things. They're awesome looking. I think so. And they're not even baked. <laughs> That's what we're getting ready to do right now. You want to put these into your preheated 450 degree oven. When they've got that nice dark brown finish that you, you love on pretzels, that's when they're ready. Look at these beauties. Look at that. That's beautiful. Bet you didn't think you could do that at home. That's cool as heck. And it's easy, as you, as you saw. These were in the oven. I let them go about 10 minutes. Then I started checking on the bottoms. When the bottoms looked nice and brown, I rotated and put the top on the bottom and the bottom on the top. That way they baked evenly. And it took between 18 and 24 minutes, basically. Yeah, it's gonna vary. But... And it's gonna vary depending on how big you make the pretzels, how fat they are. It depends on your oven, a lot of, a lot of factors. Then at the end, just so I got this nice brown, they were already very brown, but to get a nice dark brown like this, you'll wanna turn on your broiler and just broil them just for less than a minute is all it takes to get this nice, beautiful golden brown. Oh my gosh, they smell great. And you'll know when they're ready, you'll push on them and see, they spring, they spring back. And also just like with any other bread, Nice. It sounds hollow. Now the ugly ones, I probably twisted that one. I, pro <laughs> I don't know. Where's the other ugly ones? I know for sure that one's mine. That's a fact. All them pretty ones over here. See, like that one's perfect looking. And look, that's perfect looking. Look at this. That's Angela K's work. Okay, look. I'm gonna take one of my ugly ones here, and I'm gonna take a good hunk out of it. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Mm. That's so good. Wow. That's impressive. I mean, we're probably going to make a dipping sauce to go with them too, but like, they really don't need it. Just being honest with you. Those are amazing, Ange. You did such a great job. Yeah. That's amazing. So hey, again, this is a, a outstanding snack to sit down and watch a movie with, which which is what we're getting ready to do. Sit down and watch a movie, enjoy enjoy a snack, and then enjoy some good family time. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. You gotta make these incredible pretzels. There's there there's okay. There's a few steps there, but they're really easy. Yeah, those are really easy steps. So thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Again, my name is Jason. That's Angela K. Our recreation homestead. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.